In this video, I'm doing a detailed review of the Resound One hearing aid. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. Resound recently released a new line of hearing aids that are going to be replacing the Lynx line of devices that Resound has been manufacturing for the past six years. The new line is called Resound One, and with it, they've released a new feature, which is a world's first. But before I get into that exciting new feature, let's go ahead and take a look at the new lineup. First and foremost, the Resound One comes in three different models. You have a size 312 battery version, which is the smallest in size, a lithium ion rechargeable version, and a size 13 battery version, which is the largest in size. For the telecoil fans out there, only the size 13 battery version has a telecoil, even though you can gain telecoil access through a multi-mic accessory with the other two versions. A couple of key features you can pick up on right away is their new shape with a distinct point at the top, a new microphone design and placement, an easier to feel push button, and new receiver wire design and attachment. They also have a new lineup of colors. Resound has definitely taken the approach of matching hair and skin tones instead of continuing with their colorful reds, blues, and camouflage colors. A few thoughts about the hearing aid design. Let's talk about build quality. The build quality of the new Resound One is substantially better than the Lynx line of devices. The Lynx products, while great when it came to performance, their exterior looked very cheap, especially with the matte finish. I would equate this to a Ford Pinto with a Ferrari engine under the hood. Now with the revamped design, the exterior build quality matches the hearing aid performance. In terms of appearance, the Resound One has a point at the top and a point at the bottom, and it kind of reminds me of an elf ear. The rechargeable version of the One is thicker towards the top of the hearing aid, which makes me feel it while it's on my ear, as opposed to the rechargeable Lynx Quattro that was thinner at the top. Resound has also introduced two new receiver designs, one of those being the new Marie receivers, which stands for microphone and receiver in ear. Resound is the first to ever incorporate a microphone on the back of a receiver in the ear, which I'll talk more about in a little bit. But you can see the difference between the Lynx receivers and the new One receivers. The new receivers hold onto domes much better than the old ones did and should help to better prevent against domes falling off inside of ear canals. Due to the change in receivers, Resound does have new retention filaments to help keep the receivers inside of your ears, which I like much better than the previous versions used on the Lynx. While not necessarily that important for a hearing aid wearer, the new receivers attach differently to the body of the hearing aid and is definitely a pain to remove, especially if you're the type of person who doesn't have good fingernails. Resound has also added a new dome style, finally adding what they call a closed dome, which was a much needed addition because up to this point, I've been fitting different manufacturers closed or vented domes on Resound receivers for years. These new domes definitely help when it comes to using the new Marie receiver. All right, this is what a Resound one looks like on my ear. So let me get it in there really quick. And the one thing I will say is that I'm not a huge fan of the actual aesthetic of the hearing device. And because it's a little bit thicker towards the top, like I mentioned before, I can definitely feel it back behind my ear. That point does stick up above my ear a little bit, which I'm not a huge fan of. I wish they could just kind of like chop that off and round it off a little bit so it kind of blends into the receiver wire a little bit better, but really it's not that big a deal. Resound is also one of those brands that I typically need to use a retention filament to keep this wire flush up against the side of my head. Uh, for whatever reason, the way that the wires are oriented, at least on me, uh, they don't fit in my ear too well, and I definitely need that retention filament to keep that dome and receiver pushed up and inside of my ears, but this is definitely not the case for all of the people that I fit Resound hearing aids on. Okay, so enough stalling. Let's go ahead and talk about the Marie receivers, which is a world's first by Resound. When I and possibly every hearing care provider in the world first heard about Resound placing a microphone on the back of a receiver, I thought no way is this going to work. You were just asking for feedback, which is that whistling sound that you hear when amplified sound cycles from a receiver back through a microphone. 
I mean, this is one of the reasons why receiver in canal hearing aids are so popular, because you take the microphones out from the ear and put them behind the ear, so the pinna actually prevents that sound that leaks out from cycling back through the microphones, causing feedback. However, with semiconductor companies hard at work to improve computer chip technology, Resound now utilizes a 28 nanometer chip, which increases their memory by 220%, and this increased processing power allows them to be able to to reduce feedback even though the microphone and receiver are so close together. Like I mentioned before, Resound developed two new receiver styles and they each have different fitting ranges. You have the Marie, which can easily accommodate hearing losses up to 65 decibels at 2000, 4000, and 6000 hertz, and for some individuals up to 80 decibels. You also have a standard receiver option that comes in low power, medium power, high power, and even ultra power if for whatever reason the Marie receiver does not work for you or your hearing loss is too severe. So why would you even want to place a microphone on the back of a receiver inside of your ear canal? Well, the answer is the pinna effect. Your pinna is basically what you can see of your ear. It's this cartilage right here. Well, this actually serves an important role in hearing. Not only does it boost some sound for you, but it actually helps you identify where that sound is coming from, and we call that localization. Not only that, but it also has the ability to help you hear a little bit better in background noise naturally. These benefits that you get are from the pinna effect, but when you actually take the microphones out of your ear canals and stick them behind your ears, the pinna doesn't serve you any benefit. Even though manufacturers try to program in correction factors to try to replicate the natural pinna effect because they're taking the hearing aid out of the ear and putting it behind the ear, it's never as good as the real thing. Take a look at these measurements of an open ear canal versus a traditional receiver and canal hearing aid that is trying to recreate the natural effect of the pinna, and finally a microphone and receiver and ear, otherwise known as the Marie. You can see that the pinna effect was maintained much better with the Marie microphone inside of the ear canal. Placing a microphone inside of your ear canal to preserve that pinna effect can help you localize sound better, it can help you perform better in background noise, and it can just make things sound more natural to you because this is how you were intended to hear. In the Groth 2020 white paper, we can see that the Marie receivers were able to preserve localization ability better than hearing aid microphones set to omnidirectional mode, which picks up sound from 360 degrees, and with pinna compensation designed to replicate the pinna effect. We can also see that the perceived overall sound quality and spatial sound quality improved with Resound's Marie receivers compared to their pinna compensation. Wind noise is also improved because the microphone is shielded by your pinna versus being exposed behind your ear. As you can see, when you take a Marie receiver and place that microphone inside of your ear canals as opposed to up on top of your ears, you can get up to 19 decibels of natural wind noise reduction. The next question that you should be asking is, can you really put the microphone inside of the ear canal so close to the receiver and not get feedback? And surprisingly, the answer is actually yes, you can do it without getting feedback, but it depends on how severe your hearing loss is, and it depends on if you select the right dome in order to retain enough of that sound inside of your ear canal rather than letting it leak out. I personally would not fit the Marie receiver on anybody who has worse than 75 decibel thresholds in the upper frequency ranges. You might be able to get away with going a little bit higher than that, but this is where a custom ear mold or a more occluded dome will come into play. This is why Resound also developed a new closed dome, and I kind of think of this as like a semi-closed dome, because you go from open, kind of to this closed, then you go to the power dome. So I kind of view it as kind of being in between those. But what this dome allows you to do is actually increase the amount of amplification before you experience feedback. So it was a really smart addition by Resound. You might be able to get away with a completely open fitting with the Marie receiver, but this definitely comes down to if you're getting feedback when you're hitting your prescriptive targets that are confirmed by real ear verification. If you just can't get the Marie receiver to work for you, you also have the option of the standard receivers like I mentioned before. You've got the low power, medium power, high power, and ultra power. So no matter what the severity level of your hearing loss, there's a high probability that you're going to be able to get it treated with the Resound 1. Just remember, even with this new amazing chip inside of the Resound 1 hearing aids, you can still experience feedback if your hearing aids are not fit and programmed correctly. All right, as exciting as it is to talk about the new Marie receiver because it's so revolutionary, we still have a lot of other things to talk about. 
Let's talk about rechargeable battery life. It takes about three hours to get a full charge on your devices, and this will give you 30 hours of battery life. But it will also give you up to 25 hours of streaming time, basically meaning that if you're a person with an even remotely normal sleep schedule, you should never run out of battery with this hearing aid. Resound now has the option of the premium charger case that stores an additional three charges, and a new standard charger that needs to be plugged into the wall. I'm sure that the standard option would save a few bucks, but the premium version can come in handy if you travel. These chargers utilize inductive charging, so there are no metal battery contacts on the Resound 1 that you have to maintain. Of course, you also have the size 312 and size 13 disposable battery options as well, if you're not into the whole rechargeable thing. Connectivity is still a strong point for the Resound 1 because all of the accessories that were available for the Lynx devices are still compatible with the One devices. The Resound 1 will also be compatible with the new Bluetooth standard that's going to be released hopefully at some point in the next year or two. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about then I highly recommend that you check out my video where I talk about this LE Audio Bluetooth and I will have that video linked down in the description because it is going to be a complete game changer in my opinion for individuals with hearing aids. With the current Bluetooth you can pretty much stream any audio directly from an Android or Apple device so we're talking about music, podcasts, YouTube videos, audio books, and of course even phone calls. Of course you do still have to have your phone on you to talk into or you're going to have to get yourself a phone clip so you can be completely hands free. With the Resound 1 you can have your hearing aids remotely programmed by your hearing care professional either asynchronously which is where they make programming adjustments send it through to your smartphone so you can upload those settings into your hearing aids or synchronously which is where you establish a live connection through live assistance in your smart 3D app and you actually have a live session with your hearing care provider so they're making changes to your hearing aid programming in real time. I still notice that the live assistance is pretty sketchy. I've been known to have 30 minute sessions with my patients where 25 minutes of that session is basically us doing troubleshooting to figure out why we can't establish a really solid connection. But I do expect this to improve over time. The Smart 3D app is still one of the better apps in the hearing aid industry, but I notice some issues establishing and maintaining a solid connection to my devices. And if you're upgrading from a Lynx device that used the Smart 3D app to the Resound 1, just completely delete the app and start over. I promise this will save you a ton of time. Another thing that Resound is touting inside of the One hearing aids is all access directionality. Basically how this works is that when you go into a noisy situation and you're talking to a person, whichever hearing aid has the better signal to noise ratio will be left in omnidirectional mode, meaning it's going to be pulling sound in from 360 degrees. However, the ear with the worst signal to noise ratio, meaning more noise, less speech, it's actually going to go into directional mode to reduce the amount of background noise coming in to that device. According to Resound, all access directionality will provide a two decibel signal to noise ratio improvement above what you could get with the Lynx Quattro devices, which can help you hear better in a background noise situation. However, for very difficult listening situations, Resound has also added a new program called Ultra Focus. Ultra Focus will basically have a very narrow pickup range right in front of you, so wherever your head turns, that's where it's going to be picking up sound from. And this is supposed to improve your ability to understand speech in a background noise situation by up to 30% above and beyond what you can get from all access directionality. Of course, if you really want to improve your ability to hear in a background noise situation even more, you really want to use a remote microphone or the multi-mic. When it comes to programming these hearing aids, there are a ton of customizations that you can do to individual programs and to the advanced features of the hearing aids. However, as a perfectionist when it comes to programming, I really wish they would give me more adjustment bands to match amplification prescriptive targets more accurately, because they only give me 10 where I'm used to using 20 different adjustment bands for premium level technology. This often creates situations where I'm over amplifying some prescriptive targets and under amplifying others. Also, if you're a Cochlear America's Cochlear Implant user, the Resound One hearing aid will be compatible with your processor for a bimodal setup. Overall, the Resound One is a pretty amazing piece of hearing aid technology that opens up the world of possibilities for hearing aid users, especially if you're interested in utilizing your own ear anatomy to help you hear better. 
Just remember, it does not matter how awesome your hearing aids are unless you've had them fit and programmed correctly by a hearing care professional who follows best practices, including real ear measurement. Now, if you don't know what best practices or real ear measurement are, I highly recommend that you watch my videos that I will link in the description. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.